Impact can be with your own child, spending more time with it. It doesn't have to be anything to do with contribution in any other way. You can contribute to your own family. But contribution is what makes us still fully alive. And I'm doing that because, I don't know if you're aware of it, but a year ago, last summer, Congress cut the budget for what was traditionally called food stamps by $8.7 billion. By the way, $8.7 billion is the equivalent of every family to support going without for food for one week a month for 12 months out of the year. And all the nonprofits are trying to support that. So I'm partnering with Feeding America. And I started writing this book, and I thought, I'm going to donate all the profits to the book. I'll feed 10 million people. And then I was like, that's not enough. And I thought, well, I'll get matching donations. And I'll raise the bar, I'll get 20 million. And as time has gone by, I finally decided I'm going to do 50 million myself, and I'm looking to raise 100 million. And that's in addition to the million I'm doing here. That's not part of it. So if you want help, you're welcome to. And Feeding America is my partner. And we're, gonna, we're working for matching funds to get to 100 million people. I'm already to 67 million, just with some friends of mine, before we even launch it. But it's a goal. And it's, why do we do it? I don't actually do it because it's heavy or something. I actually do it because you can't. Do it because it's fun. Do it because research shows when it comes to money, buying things will never make you happy. Never. It doesn't mean you shouldn't have some nice things. I have some nice things. I'm sure you do too. But it's not going to give you happiness. Buying experiences can make you happy, by the way. We say, people say money doesn't matter. They don't know where to shop. Because there's some experiences you can buy that are extraordinary. Who's got some experiences, some trips, some things you've done with family or friends that will live with you for years? Who knows what I'm talking about here, right? Those things, that money can be a really valuable tool there. If you can find enough ad value and have money and do those experiences, how cool. I'll tell you what else money research shows will do. People always say money doesn't matter once you get to a certain level. No, it matters that you can spend $5 a month and have more emotional juice, and it can be measured all the way down by, into your saliva by hormonal changes. You want to use money, not let money use you. And so another thing it'll do it is getting rid of drudgeries. Who here loves to pay for shit you don't want to do? Right? Cleaning the toilet, who likes to have someone else be able to do that if at all possible, right? Because once you do that, those drudgeries are gone. What do you get to do? You have time. And with time, you can spend more time with your passions, the things that matter for you that you can do in the world, that share in the world. And the third thing and the third thing that gives people the most enjoyment our money, just so you know, is actually giving it away. And nobody believes that until you do it. Now, if you don't give a dime out of a dollar, you're not going to give a hundred million out of a billion ever. Don't kid yourself. So the places start wherever we are. And if you do, I think you can find there's enormous enjoyment in that process. And I think you also find that if there's somebody you love, you do something for it's even more. So that's why I'm here. And I want to now make sure in the time that you're here, let's kick this in gear. And let's talk about three things that can truly change the quality of your life. Number one, first of all, if you make new decisions about the focus on, try this just for a moment. Just for a second, take a deep breath in. Exhale and give it a moan. That was really pathetic. Let's try that again. <laughs> Deep breath in, then make it a sexual moan and thoroughly enjoy it. Oh, that was much longer and deeper. I like that. That was good. One more time. Use deep breath in and give it a moan. Now, one of the things that I want to talk to you about here tonight, this afternoon, is really simple. And that is, everyone here is in business and there's a problem that all businesses have. We're in the most competitive environment we've ever been in. We went from, what, 500 million people being online a couple billion people being online and in the next four years they're saying we're going to have three billion more online that means this entire world is a bigger market if you're the person that adds more value it also means you're going to have more competitors than you've ever seen in your life how many think the economic world that we're in today is going to stay the way it is raise your hand okay one man on drugs there's always one okay how many think that the economic environment is going to go through seasons? We're going to have some more ups and downs as we adjust to what's happening in the world here. Say, I. Well, then if we know that, our goal, you and I as leaders, should be to anticipate that. In fact, everyone in this room is a leader of something, whether you're the leader of the company or whether you're a leader of the department or whether you're a parent or hopefully you're a leader and not a follower. If you're a leader, you've got to exercise that skill. And so I want to talk to you about that and one of the most important skills of that. But most people don't exercise that leadership because they're dropping behind in their skill sets. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. How many of you in this room, I want an honest answer. I'd like you to yell the answer and raise your hand if you would, please. How many of you in this room have ever experienced the absolute total humiliation of playing a video game against a child? Scream I if you've done this experience. Oh, come on, let me hear you. What happens when you play the child? Who always wins? Come on, who wins? Always, why? Is it because they're faster? Is that they're smarter, they're younger, their neurons are functioning at a quicker tempo? Here's how it usually works. You're a mother or father, you're an uncle or an aunt, your grandfather or grandmother, you're a friend of the family, you're looking for a gift, we live in a tech world, 
in a world where today children play with an iPad and learn how to use it before they know how to tie their shoes. How different is that world? I was with Mark yesterday with his daughter for her six year birth, six, six year old birthday, and we're talking about things. And she's got these Legos, and a friend of ours says, Oh, my six year old goes, like, goes on the iPad, searches on YouTube for videos on how to build cool stuff using Legos, and starts to study how to build all these structures. That's the world we're in that our kids are in at six years old. And imagine what else they're searching for and finding at six years old. It's a wild, wild world. So here we are with this technology and most of us are not seeing what it's doing for us. So you sit down with this child who's high tech, you're not. Even the techies in this room aren't usually as gamers. I know there are plenty of gamers in the room, but there's plenty of not. And then what does the child do? The child says, oh, come on. Go, look, I'm not good at this. This is for you. Come on, uncle. Come on, auntie. Come on, mom. Come on, dad. It's my birthday. It's Christmas. They use the guilt approach, don't they? And what do you find? You finally break down. Okay. Now you should know you're being set up when they go, you go first, <laughs> right? And they go, look, it's really simple. You just shoot, 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 shoot. You just shoot these guys and it all drops down. And you think, okay, I'm gonna show this little bastard. I can do a thing or two here, right? Take out the gun, you're choo, 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 and you're dead in 2.3 seconds. Who's experienced this? Say, I. Now what happens to the child? Choo, 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 and about 45 minutes later, you get your second turn. Am I right? And then you're now you're really pissed. You're dedicated. You're devoted. You're focused. You're gonna take this thing out. Choo, 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 choo. You last four seconds and you're dead. Out of the side of the head. The kid. Choo, 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 choo. Forty-five minutes again. Who's had this experience? Say I. Why does the child always win? These are predictable. And if you were to anticipate these things and put a strategy in place, you could take it all out and have the quality of life that you deserve. In business, it's everything. Those that anticipate those that lead, and then there's those that follow. The followers are the reactionaries. So the more we can anticipate, and you can't anticipate and lead unless you first learn how to lead yourself at a different level. And so I love to have you just see that if you and I can start to take control of our focus, and we can start to take control of the meaning of our lives and make something really that meaning that empowers us, because look, what's wrong is always available, isn't it? There's always an Ebola, a bird flu, there's always something that's gonna kill the entire human race tomorrow on TV. And then there's your life. What's wrong is always available and so is what's right. And you have to take control of that focus because otherwise you become the follower and you get to live your life. Even though you're a smart person, we're all smart, but it's easy to get led astray by everybody else's focus, isn't it? And then all of a sudden let them create the meaning for us. And then all of a sudden we're settling for a life far less than what we desire or deserve.